Hey friends, Andy Paul here, host of the Sales Enablement Podcast. Next up for you, we have Tyler Lassard, the proud VP of Marketing at Vidyard. Now with 15 years of experience in B2B marketing, sales enablement, and content marketing, Tyler is going to cover how to use video to cut through the noise of Zoom, Skype, and Hangouts and gain marketing and sales momentum. Now, let's get into it. Hey everyone, it's Tyler Lassard, VP Marketing at Vidyard here, and welcome to this session as part of the Selling Forward Virtual Summit on how to use video to grow your marketing and sales momentum in 2020 and beyond. Now, quick introduction. Uh, as mentioned, I head up the marketing team here at Vidyard, and I've been in this space of video in business for more than six years now. And I gotta tell you, I absolutely love it, and it's really exciting to see what's happening right now where video is truly coming to the forefront and is now an expected content medium, whether you're talking about marketing, sales, how we communicate internally, or simply how we wish our friends a happy birthday. So let's talk a little bit about this. And the goal of this session is to help you walk away with tangible ideas, whether you're in B2B marketing or B2B sales, how to use video right now to absolutely change your sales and marketing momentum. And you're definitely gonna walk away with at least a few of those that you should be able to implement literally at the end of this session. So let's hop right into it. And before I get into the meat, I'm gonna share with you a really important story to set the stage for why this is such a critical topic. Now, recently I had to buy a new vehicle. And I'm sure many of you have been down this path in recent years. Uh, but for me, the lease on my old vehicle was up at the end of March of 2020. And for those of you keeping track, that was at the heart of the lockdown of the pandemic. And so when looking for a new vehicle, I had no choice but to do my buying journey online. Now, if you Google images for car sales or buying a car, you'll find images like this. And the funny thing is, if you look at this, this is not at all how people buy cars in today's world, right? The process my wife and I went through looked a lot more like this. It was us on our computers doing all of our research online before we even reached out to a local dealership. And even when we did, and in this case, of course, that we were forced to, but even when we did, the rest of our buying process happened almost entirely out of our house. Now, when we started researching vehicles, needless to say, the internet was our best friend. And we not only checked down a lot of the different specs, but of course, we watched a lot of videos to not only see the vehicles in action, but to watch other people's uh, reviews of vehicles uh, to help us really understand and trust what we were looking for. And not only that, you know, once we had it down to a handful of vehicles we were most interested in, we reached out to a few different dealerships. And the initial re response we got from one of them amazingly stood out from the others. And it looked something like this. This is my buddy, Will Hearn, now my buddy. He wasn't before I started this, but he's a car sales rep at a local dealership where I live. And he was the only one of the three dealerships that responded to me almost immediately with a video. The others were the usual form responses, but Will stood out because of the email I got on the left. This was the first communication from Will, and it started off with a video where he walked through the entire vehicle I was interested in. He knew which one, because I filled out the form and said, I'm interested in this kind of vehicle, this kind of package. Can you let me know what you guys have and let me know some more details? So he actually used his phone, and he introduced himself at the beginning of the video. And this ended up being about a seven minute video where he walked through he went into the trunk, he went into the back seat, showed all the nuances of it, and very clearly walked me through all the things that I needed to know. This to me, as a buyer, was actually quite amazing. Now, he was forced to communicate with me like this because I couldn't physically come into the dealership during the lockdown. But I gotta tell you, even when I can go back into a dealership, this is the experience I want. This was so much better than having to actually go in and talk to a physical sales rep. I got all the information I needed and I got to know him on a fairly personal level all within a matter of minutes without having to leave my home. No scheduling an appointment, no call, no meeting, entirely on my terms and in a way that I could consume the content whenever I could. And of course, I have four kids at home. You may see some nice artwork in the background. I have very little time to go out and do anything right now while they're at home with me and not in school. So this is a great example of a modern buying experience 
watching content online during the research stage, interacting with a sales rep via one-to-one -one videos in an asynchronous fashion. This is the buying experience of the future, at least in my perspective. And it really calls to light some of the changes that we've seen happening, but have now been even accelerated further during the pandemic and the lockdown. We all know the buyer's journey has changed in recent years, right? There's nobody that will deny that. But think about how different things are than they were five, 10 years ago, and frankly, even now, six to nine months ago. The biggest change that I've seen with the, of course, drive towards digital and online everything is more and more people are expecting a self-serve buying experience, right? It's demanded by buyers these days. If they're not able to learn about your products or services, learn about your company, and get very close to the point where they're ready to make a buying decision without doing all of that on demand online themselves, then you may not even be a part of the final decision because somebody else is giving them that ability. If you're still requiring people to book a call with sales before even seeing what it is you do, you're already losing business and you don't even know it, right? This is what we need to think about. People have greater expectations, right? They expect all this information and answers like that. Right? When I was buying a car, thank goodness, all the pricing information was completely transparent. Right? As a buyer, that was amazing to me. 20 years ago, it wasn't. You had to go in, you had to ask the questions, and then they would pitch you on a price. And finally, an important note here is in this new world where we need to enable people to buy online, to research and understand what we do without ever talking to uh, a sales rep live, is the trust factor. So how do we still in this world earn the trust of our audience? How do we build that personal relationship without ever meeting them face to face and with probably not getting into a live phone or video call until late in the buying journey? So these are the things we need to think about as marketers and sellers right now. And these are many of the things that video can help you solve in very, very meaningful ways. So the big takeaway from this, get your Twitter fingers ready because I've got a tweetable for you right here is that in today's world more than ever, please, please, please understand this. Take the screenshot, write it down. Market and sell in the way that you would want to research and buy. If you're a marketer, put yourself in the shoes of being a prospect. How do you want to learn about a business? And if you're a seller, put yourself in the shoes of that prospect and think about how would you really want to go through that buying process? And that's why I love that example of how I recently bought a car because that was the process as a buyer I wanted to go through. But all those changes didn't happen until they were forced on the marketers and sellers. So now is your opportunity to get ahead of that and say, you know what, we're gonna change the way we market and sell to be 100% buyer centric. We're gonna focus on what it is people are looking for and give them that experience. You can do it, I know you can. And again, there's some Twitter handles there. I made this easy for you. If you think this is powerful, tweet it right now, I'd love to see it. Um, and don't forget to put it up on your board at your home office as a daily reminder that you can do the best you can do. Okay, so if this is true and you buy into this, I got a question for you. Let's say you're a buyer out there today. And let's say you go to your website. Say you work for a different company and now you're shopping for something in the world of what you actually market or sell. And you're on your company's website and you're starting to learn about what your business does. Which of these calls to action would you be most likely to click on while researching? Contact us, book a meeting, or watch a demo now. Now, feel free to push one of those buttons on the screen. I won't know directly, but I can tell you with a good degree of certainty that the majority of you are thinking watch a demo now. Yes, there's some of you that would probably book the meeting, and frankly, most of you would at some point book that meeting with a sales rep to have that one-to-one -one conversation. It's still important. But while you're in that research phase, you wanna see it without having to schedule that time. So why do our websites still get littered with book a meeting, call sales, talk to sales, and very few actually have the opportunity to just learn in a friction-free self-serve way, watch a demo, see it in action, Find out about this. Get all the way through your journey the way you want it to happen. Now, let me give you a showcase of somebody who is doing this incredibly well today. This is one of those ideas worth stealing, so pay attention here. It's my good friends at Marketo. Now, if you're watching this webinar, good chances are you know who Marketo is. And I encourage you, right after this, or even right now, pop open another tab, I don't care, 
go to marketo.com and check out this experience for yourself. Because I think this is the gold standard for software co and tech companies for how they need to engage buyers. If you go to marketo.com, the screenshot you're seeing here is I also have the products menu um, clicked open. And look around and tell me what you see here. Tell me what looks different from most other B2B websites. All right, I'll show you right now. I'll highlight it for you, make it easy on you. Look at these calls to action. I haven't doctored anything up here. I'm not like 20 pages down into some secret place. This is their homepage, ladies and gentlemen. Their primary CTA at the top of the site is view a product tour. In fact, they don't even have a talk to sales call to action. When you click on their products menu, watch a four minute demo is their hero CTA. And at the bottom, that's a sticky footer that follows you around everywhere that says see product tour. These are the actions they want you to take. In fact, they would rather you take that step than just click a button to contact sales. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So let's continue this journey a little bit further. What will happen when you click on one of these three buttons? Well, you're actually prompted with a form. Now, some businesses will do this in a way where it's ungated because they want to get you right into the content. But in Marketo's case, this is a key part of their lead gen efforts. And they didn't want to be left with um, you know, leads that weren't identified early on, people that they could send over to their sales team. So they ensured that this was still protected with a form. But here's the magic. The, con uh, the conversion rate on this form is incredibly high for them because people's expectation is they're now able to see and watch a product tour by giving this information. My belief is that people are even more willing to fill out this form than they would be if the offer on the other side was to book a meeting. I mean, think about it from your own sense. Would you be willing to fill out a form if it meant you got to watch on-demand demos of somebody's solutions and it meant you didn't have to book a meeting, right? Think about it. So their conversion rate on this form is actually quite high. So you fill out the form and you're dropped into this beautiful experience called the Marketo Engage Interactive Tour. Now, there's this nice big video here, just like they promised, where I can now watch this video tour of what they do. Now, let me show you a couple of really interesting things that I think take this even to the next level. When you start watching this first video, this is their hero video, and it's about four minutes long. They talk through all the different aspects of their solution and their platform. They've got a pretty complex product, and they actually have multiple different solutions they sell. So as you're watching, they introduce you to each of the different aspects of their solution. And when they do, they actually pop up an interactive call to action on the top of the screen where you can click a button to dive off and watch a video about that specific product or feature. So if I'm watching this and then I'm like, oh, that's the thing that I really need to learn about, I can immediately click that CTA and start watching a video about that specific product or feature. So it allows me as an individual to quickly customize my experience. And again, as a buyer, I love this, right? It's giving me control over what I'm seeing and how I'm interacting with it and making the most of every second that I've got. Now, at the end of this video, you can scroll down and you'll see that there's actually, of course, the big call to action now is contact sales, right? Ready to take the next step, talk to one of our experts. And of course, you still need that. And then below that, they actually have a library of all their different breakout videos or their videos that talk about individual products or features. There's actually about a dozen videos in here. I'm only showing the first three. So you can now binge on any one of these to dive deeper into what they do. And you can see it, right? You can actually see the products in action. They're not just bullet points. They're not just cheat sheets. They're real videos showing their products. Now, to me, this is as close as we're going to get to a B2B Netflix style experience. And again, I think for a buyer, this is really top at launch. And as a sales person on the Marketo team, what I also know for a fact is they use this resource center all the time in their sales process. If they're talking to somebody, they'll point them to this place to go and learn about the different products, and they can go in there and binge on all these different videos. But now, wait, let me tell you the best part. You thought it couldn't get any better, right? No, no, no. This gets even better. For Marketo, they're not only now generating a new lead through the form and quickly educating a potential buyer. But guess what? They're using video engagement data behind the scenes to track which videos you're watching, how long you're watching each of those. And in real time, those are triggering lead scores into their marketing automation and CRM. Which means if somebody goes in here and watches the first four minute demo all the way through, and then they start binging on the other videos, and next thing you know, they've watched 15 minutes worth of demo videos, 
that is immediately going to trip them over a lead score threshold, and they're going to get sent to sales for an immediate follow-up. And what's even cooler is the sales rep can go in and see exactly which of the videos they watch, which parts they replayed multiple times, which parts they skipped, and they now have incredible insight into what that buyer might be interested in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my absolute favorite example of what we should all be doing today, because this is the way to market, the way that people want to buy. Now, let's move on to another uh, question for you all. Again, if you buy into this idea that you should market and sell the way that you wanna buy, answer this question for me, please. So let's say, now let's ch change it up. Um, let's say that you were now researching Marketo and marketing automation solutions. You would watch those demo videos. Now you're well-educated. You're starting to think about what you need. Now you've got to dive deeper into this topic and you want to really learn about best practices in marketing automation. So you've got 30 minutes or so you want to spend to try to start to do this. If you had that amount of time, what would you do to learn as much as you can about the world of marketing automation? I put a lot of comments, calls to action up on the screen. Do you want to do you download a guide? Do you read a few blog posts or do you watch some videos? Now, look, I'm not going to get up here and profess that everybody should just be watching videos because, in fact, many of you are going to answer differently to this question. Some of you are going to be more likely to want to download and read a guide. Some of you are going to want to watch the videos. The reality is people want to learn in different ways, and we need to be able to offer them all of these different options. But most people today are missing that video component, and they're only offering text-based ways to learn about things. And it's a big missed opportunity, especially with how today's audiences want to learn. And in fact, I have my own focus group here at home, and I can tell you how my kids would have answered this question. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they would answer that they would watch some videos without hesitation. Now, no, these are not my kids. Mine aren't nearly this adorable, uh, but they look exactly like that for about eight hours a day right now. Um, watching video content. Thankfully, some of it is actually educational and learning. But we're not selling to kids, right? We're all selling to real business professionals. The reality is, in business, this is more and more the way that they want to interact as well. Let me show you another example now that really emphasizes this point about how people can do this in today's world. Gordian is um, a customer of ours here at Vidyard, and uh, they are in a market where they actually market and sell largely into government agencies. And they have a solution um, that uh, helps them with managing the procurement process for large construction projects. So they've got to build a new city hall, they've got to repair a big bridge, um, something like that. And uh, they'll use a different service provider out there to help them manage that program. And Gordian is one of them. So in that world, there's a few different ways you can do it. And one of those ways is a process called job order contracting. And Gordian services are based off of that process. So in their world, one of the big topics that they educate their audience on is job order contracting. Now, it doesn't matter what it is, but think about in your own business, what are, what are one of those really big meaty topics that you want to own, right? They're probably the same topics you're already writing eBooks and blog posts for. So think about that as I talk about this. So they said, okay, job order contracting is something we need to educate people on. And they had eBooks. They had lots of blog posts. Then they started to think about how could we educate people on this through video. Not only would videos give us other ways to distribute the content, like YouTube and social media channels and whatnot, but it also gives us a new way to engage our audience with it. It gives us a much more memorable and visual way to tell the story. And we can also incorporate lots of different things to make the story more compelling. So they went about and they did that. And they created a four-part video series called What is Job Order Contracting? Um, or Job Order Contracting 101. And, just, and it's about 25 minutes of content in total. And they, again, just like Marketo, they actually gated this for unknown audiences. So if you were interested in watching this amazing four-part series on job order contracting, you could hit the register now button on their page, present a form to unlock this content, and you were then brought into a portal where you could binge on these, uh, this four-part series. And again, each video was somewhere between five to eight minutes in length. And uh, in total, I think it was about 20 to 25 minutes worth of content. So something really interesting happened in this process. Um, not only did they see that there was a huge part of their audience um, that ended up preferring to go in and binge on the videos, right? Back to that last question, you got 30 minutes to learn about something, you could read a PDF or you could watch some videos. 
Science tells us that these videos actually help us learn faster, we retain longer, and we can pack more information into them. So you can get more value out of this 30 minute video series than you could have for reading the ebook for 30 minutes. So it's actually more valuable to the audience. Um, and what they also found was that it gave them better signals of interest and intent and helped to feed their lead gen engine much better. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually the same idea as what you just saw in that Marketo example. People who actually unlock and start watching these videos, not only do they know who opted in, just like if they filled out the form for the PDF, but again, they're tracking behind the scenes, how long did somebody watch each of those videos? Did they watch the first video all the way to the end and then bail from there? Did they watch the first video for five minutes, the second video for three minutes, and the third video for a full eight minutes, right? They had real-time insight into that. And yes, they use Vidyard as their video hosting platform on the back end, and they're connected into their own Marketo and Salesforce systems. So they actually built out custom lead scoring models to say if you watch a certain amount of video content, you would get more and more points. And at some point, you would get flipped to sales. And what was amazing here was they found, based on how they think about it, if somebody downloads a PDF, they would never just immediately get flipped to sales because it, it shows maybe interest, but not intent or engagement. But in this case, if somebody watches all the videos, they immediately score, score, score and get flipped to sales and they can qualify people within 30 minutes. So this was a big win for their marketing team too. And of course their sales team loved it because they could follow up with the most engaged people. So again, huge home run here, just rethinking the way that we create content, right? Is your content marketing team producing videos? Are they tackling your big topics in video format? And then are they using them strategically or are they just putting them out on social? Be smart about it. And I'll give you a tip at the end about how to actually productize a program like this and find the kind of success that the friends at Gordian did who actually were able to show that this campaign attributed to more than 6 million in revenue within the first 12 months of launch, $6 million. And they have all the multi-touch attribution data to show it. People loved it. It was a huge hit. All right, last question for you. I got a few minutes left. Let's plow through this. Maybe the most important one is you as a prospect have now watched videos, you've checked out some demos, and a sales rep from that company is following up with you. What kind of outreach from that sales rep would be most impactful for you as a potential buyer? A phone call? No. An email message? Maybe. A video message? Maybe. Again, sales reps need to have a repertoire of ways to contact people. And all of these are important channels for them, but so few are using video today. And I point you back to my first example of my now buddy, Will Hearn, the car sales rep who sent me that video and how compelling that was for me as a buyer. Again, not every email from him had a video, but those critical ones did and it made all the difference in the world. And the great thing is this is dead simple to do these days. If you don't know already, um, Vidyard has a free tool that plugs right into Chrome, Gmail, Outlook, Salesloft, Outreach, and Groove, and Zant and the list goes on. And literally for a sales rep, it's one click to record a video and you can do either a webcam video or a screen capture. In fact, pro tip, um, I use it to do just about every kind of video every day. Um, and once you've recorded your video, it's one click to then send it off to a customer or prospect. And it automatically drops the thumbnail image for that video into the email, along with a link to watch it on a dedicated page. So it just breaks down all those barriers for a rep to quickly record and send a video and I know Will Hearn is using a tool just like Vidyard um, in his process. Super, super simple. And you can use it for lots of different use cases. You see lots of visuals here for how people are using video. And the real key to this is it lets your personality shine. It lets you be more personal, lets you be more interesting. And it also lets you use visuals to clearly explain complex ideas, whether you're selling a physical product or a digital product. So Again, this is just a new part of how we need to think about selling if you want to accelerate momentum and help people buy on their terms. So I'm gonna close with a couple of power statements here, folks. More tweetables, so get your fingers ready. The easiest way to create marketing and sales momentum is to provide a friction-free experience that's as on-demand as possible. Sorry, I know there's a lot there. Now that I say it out loud, it's probably too much for you to tweet right now. But think about that. If you want to create that momentum in your marketing and sales, create friction-free self-serve experiences. Make them on demand. In marketing, give them access to your content. Show them what you're all about. In sales, let them watch your content whenever they need to. Introduce yourself via video message. Walk them through something custom through a screen capture. Don't always rely on that live phone call or video call. I know as a sales rep, you're gonna panic. You're like, I need to get that person on a call to move a deal forward, but I'm telling you, 
if at certain points in the buy cycle, use these kinds of videos and it's going to be a win for both of you. Now, video, of course, can be a powerful way to do what we just talked about, right? It's an incredible way to create those self-serve experiences while also preserving the personal nature of having to build relationships. And that to me is the real win with video. There's, video isn't your only solve to creating a friction-free buying experience by any means, but it is such an important element because it lets you show rather than just tell. It helps you create clarity, but it also lets you put your people on camera and build relationships without having to get on live calls or see people in person. Now, I got one minute left here and I am going to leave you with five tips for how to make video work for you in marketing and how to make video work for you in sales. Do a screen capture, grab this to go, and then we're gonna flip into a couple minutes of Q&A. So first, for video in marketing, focus on education. Don't worry about using video for big promos and stuff. Focus on educating your customers and answering the questions that they might have. Use it to remove points of friction or lack of clarity in your buying process. It will absolutely shine there and help you move people through the cycle faster. Collaborate with your sales team to find out what kinds of videos would be really impactful. And the last two points, first, get somebody in-house that can do this. Skill up your content marketing team, skill up your social person, or hire an in-house producer. It will pay huge dividends. I can't stress that enough. And finally, make sure you've got the right tech. I gave you examples of how Vidyard as a video hosting platform can not only help you publish your videos, but track engagement, get that into your marketing on automation and CRM, and help you actually turn it into real lead gen programs. So that's super critical. Think about it. Check out our website, obviously, to learn more. And finally, video and sales. My top five pieces of advice to really make it hum. First, get your sellers not only using Zoom and synchronous videos for video calls, but get them thinking about this idea of recording and sending one-to-one -one or asynchronous videos. Get them to sign up for Vidyard for free. There's no risk. Just do it. Get them to start to learn it and see how it goes. Um, second is think about for outbound reps, where it could fit in their sales cadence and try different styles, webcams, screen captures, and so on. Third, for your AEs, video again can be a great way to communicate with customers offline, to record custom demos, or to record video-based walkthroughs of sales proposals. Lots of different ways you gotta get creative. And all of this means making video a part of the culture of your sales team. We're already doing it with things like Zoom and video calls. Now start to tease in this idea of recording and sending offline videos. And I promise you, it will be a successful tactic for you if your team can get on board. So my last point there is again, there's really no barrier to doing this today. Go to vidyard.com slash free, sign up, get your reps to do it. And it plugs right into Chrome, plugs right into Gmail or Outlook, give it a whirl and try it out for yourself. So. Thanks very much. We're going to hop over into a super quick Q&A if we still have time. Um, and I'm going to leave up on the screen here a final uh, tweetable for you that I would be forever grateful if at least a few of you put this out there to let the Selling Forward team know how much you absolutely loved this content. Let me know. Honestly and seriously, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things. And with that, we will uh, wrap up the formal content and uh, move it into Q&A. Thanks so much, guys. Yep. Thanks so much, Tyler. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump into Q&A. So I like the, the experience you had with the sales rep in the uh, car dealership. And uh, we had a webinar earlier today that had the four top sales authors from our sales madness. Uh, and one of the authors was saying to a question about what's the training like and how do you advance people <laughs> and uh, how do you advance salespeople in their training? It's like, well, the best people are going to adapt and win regardless and yeah. gave a similar example of how if you're just not afraid of the video, uh, then that's going to be a huge benefit to you. And he went into how do you even address the camera uh, and the screen at the same time and how do you not lose eye contact because you have to go and see the person there so yeah. what are some other ways or some other uh tips and tricks you have on using video as a sales rep yeah it's a great point because for a lot of people adopting video even zoom calls right has been um kind of like when you get started doing cold calling or started doing other forms of selling right where you you, you have to learn you have to practice you build that muscle your first video is always your worst and your last video is always your best, right? Your, that consistency is really important to getting comfortable, getting confident in how you deliver your message. And so I think for a lot of people, um, that goes a long way, is you know sticking with it, 
being consistent with it. Um, little things like making sure you have a confident setup, like having a camera at eye level, having decent lighting in your room so that when you are on video, you're not always feeling like, oh, it's like I, I look crappy, the lighting sucks, my sound sucks, right? So try to get a good confident setup that you feel good about. Um, you know, consistently use it to get practice and, and build that muscle. And also don't be shy to use it internally first, right? You don't always have to make every video something you, you send out to a customer. So consider using it internally with your peers, with your teammates, right? Um, so record quick videos and send over wins or, or uh, you know, experiences that you had on a given day. If you're a sales leader, send quick videos around to your team to talk about the week's results or things that are coming up. And you know, start to do that just as a way to bring it into your repertoire to get people more comfortable, more confident, and just having that consistency and using it. And I think that goes a long way for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I like that uh, idea of practicing with your internal teams and even giving quick sure. updates. Uh, I think we're all getting used to using video more often with our, just our one-on-one -on -one interactions with each other, as yeah. most times I think cameras were turned off prior. Uh, how how should you be or how much should you be worried about the quality of the video? I know that there's different scenarios where maybe it's good to be more professional or not. Um, maybe when you take it as far as sales versus marketing on that, because marketing, I think you think it should always be perfect, but uh, I, I don't know yeah. if that's changed or not. Yeah, I think, I mean, in both cases, perfect is the enemy of, of done and uh, <laughs> and useful. And And I think in today's world more than ever, we have the liberty to create and share content that is very genuine, authentic, transparent, uh, without having to feel like we're not being professional. So there's actually a really good opportunity right now to do this, because in other times people are, are very hesitant because they say, oh my gosh, my daughter is gonna walk into the room while I'm on camera. But these days, that doesn't matter, right? We're, we're all we're kind of like our guards are down, um, you know, that, that's just a part of life now. And so it gives us a little bit more liberty to do these things without feeling like it has to be perfect, which is great, because none of us are gonna be perfect on camera. Um, so I think have that as a, as a good mindset. A couple of other quick tips. Um, good audio goes a long way, and good audio is often more important than good video quality from a content quality perspective. People have to be able to hear what you're talking about um, even more so than they need to be able to see. So make sure you're using, if possible, you know, your AirPods, a, a headset, um, or that you just have good audio input and, and focus on that. And then again, think little things like lighting. I actually have, I'll just hit the button here, I've got a little you know, light on top of my camera that I can use to give myself a little bit more direct, uh, you know, forward facing light, little things like that, that can help or hurt depending on how you use it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but you'll learn your own style. But at the end of the day, I think being personal, being, um, you know, conversational in your tone wins out nine times out of 10. And um, I would feel less worried about how professional you are and be more worried about the value that you're delivering and the connection you're making, right? Those are the two big things. Is your message relevant and valuable or are you wasting the person's time? And are you using the medium to do the superpowers, to be personal, to introduce yourself, use your body language, use your visuals, right? Think about it as a new way to communicate, not just a way to read your phone scripts on camera. And I think those are the more important things than high quality versus low quality. Uh, so a question that came in about uh, a good cadence with using video in the sales process yeah. uh should it only be in the pitch could it be in just a, a quick reply you can use it should you save it for certain scenarios uh where it's not every interaction is video or is that okay yeah um it's a great question and we we see commonly for those that have a sort of a multi-touch cadence for outbound sales in particular uh, where you're doing multiple sends and touches via email phone social and now incorporating video we often see that you know video gets incorporated into those at two or three points throughout in a cadence that would usually be, let's say, eight to 10 touches in total. And what people will often do is early in the cadence, you know, it might be their second message that they send, including a webcam style video where they're introducing themselves and explaining very clearly um, how it is that they think they can help. And that's a great way to build that initial rapport and even if they don't watch the video, just that simple fact of them seeing your face right in their inbox and being able to associate your email address with the real human, that actually even in itself goes a long way. So I think that to build that human rapport early. And then later on in the cadence, people will often use screen recordings, browser tab recordings, uh, possibly with their camera on it as well, where they might be showing something visually to explain an idea, to reference something that that prospect might be interested in. 
something that's visually relevant to catch their attention and pique their interest. So lots of different ways to do it. Um, we also see people using it in response to inbound leads or throughout the rest of the sales cycle. Because the reality is, right, like a video message is another and sometimes more compelling way to deliver whatever message you're trying to deliver. So I think we need to get out of this like siloed world of like, this is for this, this is for this. It's like, no, I've got a message to deliver to you as a prospect or a customer. I could use email, I could use phone, or I could use video. And there is a time and place for each. And when I think about video, don't get stuck in that mindset of video equals a live Zoom call, right? Because mm -hmm. I can record and send a quick video to you just as quickly, if not faster, than I can type a long email and send it to you. So just get yeah. into that mindset and it starts to open your eyes to ways in which you could be using video to, again, build that personal touch throughout the cadence or the, the sales cycle. Yeah, and from the marketing sales enablement side, uh, I've often given uh, reps materials to say, in this stage in the process, deliver this white paper mm -hmm. or this infographic. And I've seen reps use video to not just send it, but to actually do a kind of like we did your presentation where uh, we had you shown with your uh, slides. Yep. Uh, they did a walkthrough of the document and how it applied to them and why yeah. they were explaining it. So I thought that was a really uh, yeah. creative way to use well, it. And a great extension to that is we hear this use case all the time of when sending over a sales proposal. So if you are mm. an AE and you're actually um, you know, working on closing a deal, um, the, the traditional approach is you send over a PDF or a DocuSign and um, that's what gets forwarded around to the buying committee for you know review and approval. Mm -hmm. But what people are now doing is they're bringing up the sales proposal on their screen, hitting the record button, their face is also in the corner, just like the way I was presenting, and they actually then scroll through and talk through the sales order. And they explain, right, this is what we talked about, these are the things that you're trying to solve. Um, so you know, as agreed upon, this solution here is to help you do this, this feature here is to help you do this, and they can clearly explain it and talk through why it is they're getting each of those things. And that way, when it gets forward around to others in the buying committee who may not have been a, a more detailed part of the buying process, nothing's getting lost in translation, right? They watch the video, they hear it directly from your mouth as a sales rep explaining it, and you're not relying on your champion to translate the value. Really simple yeah. idea, but really impactful. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and as we go through the, these two days of sessions, I think video is probably the thing that's getting brought up most, whether it's in context like we're speaking about uh, or even just a better way to use your Zoom one-on-one -on -one meetings yep. in, in, in general, um, but yep. certainly wanting to make sure that uh, you we get more creative with it. So the, the I guess one more question that has been brought up before we go, sure. we'll leave it here at this question. I like the idea of using a video message uh, but should we be worried about the size of the emails? I think oh, the right. file size yeah. is what they're talking about. So maybe you can explain how that yeah. happens. Yeah, good question. I think that was from uh, from Brandis. So the um, so when you're actually recording and sending a video, the way that it works with tools like Vidyard, and there are others, um, but uh, the way that it works is you hit the record button in Chrome or Gmail or Outlook, where we plug into, you record your video. And uh, it then immediately drops in a thumbnail image that's hyperlinked to watch that video on a dedicated page online. So you're not actually attaching the video file. You're simply sending basically a link to watch that video on its own dedicated page. And that's really, really important because then, of course, yes, the emails will not get blocked because of a large attachment. Um, you're, you yourself aren't going through the process of trying to upload large files or anything like that. So that's the real gold mine right now is just the simplicity of it. And that's why we're seeing a lot of activity in sales because it's literally click to record, automatically drops the thumbnail and the URL into the email and you send it off. And when that person watches it, they get a branded playback experience. So just making it as simple as possible and again, getting around some of those challenges that uh, that you would overcome with it actually attaching a video. So um, so yeah, so, so give that a whirl um, and yeah, feel free to, to try out Vidyard and you can see how it works for yourself and it's, it's, it's really simple and, and, and pretty straightforward. It's fantastic. Uh, we'll go ahead and end it there since we're quite a few minutes over, but uh, obviously we saw your Sounds contact good. information there. Anytime you want to reach out uh, to Tyler, please do so and thank you, Tyler. Thank you everyone for joining. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks guys.